Western dance form that goes back so far or has evolved as much. You know what else is aspirational? The Louvre in Paris. One photo of it on our Instagram and we have arrived. But India's National Gallery of Modern Art, which has one of the richest collections of contemporary arts, gets just 30,000 visitors a year. The Louvre in Paris gets 2.5 million visitors every year. The Tate in London has an annual footfall of 4 million. What explains this gap? Is it India's disinterest in everything Indian or the obsession with everything Western? Do we still blame Macaulay for this? Or our failure to invest in our culture? The reasons are multiple and the result is clear. Today an Indian dreams of becoming Western, aping the West or living the Western lifestyle. For an Indian, the West has become synonymous with advancement and modern living. But these are two different things, Western and modern. If only we could cure this 75-year-old colonial hangover, if only we could look through what Macaulay wanted us to learn, if only we could reconnect with our heritage, we would realize that it's us, the Indians, who have always been ahead of our times. Ancient India was aspirational, ancient India was advanced. Meet Bodhayana. He lived in 800 BC. He calculated what the world knows today as the Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras lived in 570 BC in Greece. Most likely he picked the theorem from the Hindu sages he studied under. Have you heard of the Fibonacci number sequence? This is how it looks. Every number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. The world credits Italian mathematician Fibonacci for the sequence. But an Indian sage named Hemchandra wrote it long before Fibonacci. And Hemchandra was not the first, by the way. An Indian mathematician named Gopala studied these numbers long before Hemchandra or Fibonacci. Eurocentric textbooks will not tell you this. Macaulay would never want you to know this. An Indian invented zero. An Indian taught the world how to calculate the value of pi. An Indian invented the decimal system or the binary digits or the heliocentric theory about the solar system. It was Aryabhat who first proposed that the earth is round, it rotates on its axis and revolves around the sun. Today we learn about Copernicus. We wear t-shirts and sweatshirts of NASA. But a thousand years before Copernicus, Aryabhat determined the diameter of the earth. He also determined the diameter of the moon. The culture of science in India dates back 5,000 years. Did you know the modern English brick bonding was inspired by Indus cities? Today we look westward at the very mention of plastic surgery, but it was India that taught plastic surgery to the world. Meet Sushrut. He was an ancient Indian physician. He lived around 800 BC in the kingdom of Kashi. Sushrut Samhita is the earliest known document to give a detailed account of rhinoplasty. It also describes more than 300 different operations, some 121 surgical instruments. A lot of them are very similar to modern day surgical tools. Sushrut would use herbs before an operation to prevent sepsis. He would also carry out cataract removal. This was in 800 BCE. Today we have lost out on this rich legacy because of our indifference to Indian heritage. And the West has time and again played it to its advantage. In the early 1990s, two American researchers take the claim to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. They said they discovered the healing properties of turmeric or haldi. These researchers were given the patent in 1995. Now here's what's funny. Indian households have been using turmeric paste on wounds for ages, but somehow we never filed a patent. Around the same time, a U.S. company applied for another patent. This was about using neem as a pesticide. Again, something Indian farmers have known for ages. This patent too was granted. Do you think there is a lesson in all of these stories? I would say there is. The world we live in will always have false claims. History will always be Eurocentric. There will always be sharks stealing ideas and innovations. But if we don't reconnect with our rich heritage, we would continue to be fooled by Macaulay and company. We will continue to believe that Indians are inferior. The world won't remind you that the Industrial Revolution that started in the West was powered by the cotton gin and that the machine was invented in India. India also had the earliest known dock it was at Lothal in Gujarat. Steel was made in India as early as 500 BC. It is possible that Indian scientist Kannad devised the atomic theory centuries before John Dalton was even born. India was the first to smelt zinc by distillation. The first seamless celestial globe was made in Kashmir. It was by Ali Kashmiri Ibn Luqman. And despite all of these advancements, India never went on an offensive. India never invaded another country. We did not have crusades. Our ancestors not just taught the world science, mathematics and astronomy, we also exemplified tolerance. 
This is the birthplace of four religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. It is hard to find a heritage this rich. 75 years ago, we got the chance to reclaim this very heritage. But have we done justice to it? 75 years ago, Mahatma Gandhi led a freedom movement so that you and I could claim what is rightfully ours. You know, the great Indian heritage. But 75 years on, our minds may still not be free and our spirit of innovation not completely unleashed. Look at the number of patents India filed in 2020 and compare this to the rest of the world. This is just one parameter, but it tells you the story. Freedom is supposed to nourish critical thinking. Freedom is about being proud of your culture, your color, your customs. So let's stop looking westwards. Let's look inwards. We've been free for 75 years. It's time we reclaimed our lost glory. It's time we reconnected with our heritage and got back to being what we've always been, far, far ahead of the times.